Welcome to the advanced introduction to the accountability program for Adams County, Pennsylvania, otherwise known as accountability training part two. This section of the program is intended for officers, any potential acting OICs, those would be folks riding the front seat, any other interested parties, public information officers, safety officers, really anybody who has an interest in the additional elements of the system and how they function. The accountability system used in this program was made possible through funding provided by the Federal Emergency Management Agency and the Adams County Volunteer Emergency Services Association. Now to begin this segment, we're just going to do a quick command structure review uh, just to put everybody on the same page. Um, in command structure, of course, we have several uh, command staff positions and general staff positions that are typically filled. A lot of those, those that we see normally filled uh, include command, uh, safety officer, public information officer, staging. We may also have liaison. Uh, typically, in most incidents, uh, we're then going to travel straight on down um, past operations and we'll have division and group supervisors who are each then assigned a number of units each. Uh, should an incident expand to the necessary scope uh, or the if the incident commander desires, we can also use an operations section chief. We can also, of course, have planning, logistics, and finance and admin uh, be activated as needed. Of course, most of the incidents that we'll handle typically will not have all of these segments. As a reminder, when we talk about groups and divisions, uh, groups are task-based, okay, based on completing a single task. Divisions are geographic-based. Uh, this could be the floor of a building, could be a specified area for a wildland or search and rescue incident. Uh, so we have task-based for groups versus geographic for divisions. Now here we have a list of the components of the system. Uh, now we already talked about the accountability tags themselves. We talked about unit cards. Uh, here in this segment we're going to start talking about um, the officer boards which are used for minor incidents or initial operations at a larger incident. Um, accountability boards and command boards used for uh, your more significant incidents. Um, command vests that function with either standard title cards, an advanced title card, or a blank title card that you're going to write on. Uh, cylinder bands, uh, location flags, uh, and clipboards which have ICS forms inside of them. Now each piece of apparatus in the county um, every piece of apparatus from engines to tankers, ambulances, and so forth, I will have what's called an accountability kit. Okay, and this kit, which you can see here, all right, contains an, like, one accountability board, one command board, two command vests with standard title cards and blank title cards, a set of cylinder bands, a set of location flags, and a clipboard uh, with a complete set of ICS forms. Now additionally, each fire department receives five officer bags. Uh, these officer bags are for distribution to chiefs and officers uh, for privately owned vehicles at the department's discretion. They contain an officer board, which is that small board we talked about, a command vest, a single command vest with a set of standard title cards and a blank title card, uh, and a clipboard with the ICS forms uh, contained within it. Okay, the first element we're going to discuss is the officer board. Um, the officer's board is intended for minor incidents or the initial operation uh, during a larger incident. Um, as far as definition of minor incident in this case, the officer board is designed to accommodate four unit cards. Um, so you can think about it in that capacity. It's going to be stored at the front seat of your apparatus. Um, be stored on the officer's door right there by the A post on the Velcro that will be attached to the door. It uh, can also be um, stored in the officer chief's privately owned vehicle uh, in the officer's bag. So five of these will show up in officer's bag that are issued to your department. Um, there is space for a collection of four unit cards as represented here. There is an area beside each of those unit cards uh, where you can write an assignment. Okay, So if we were going to assign uh, this upper left unit to rescue, we could write rescue and grease pencil right there on the, uh, the officer board to denote that. It's a write-on wipe-off material. You use it for basic incident information. 
Um, you can put in the box area, the occupancy, the address, and your basic uh, objectives are there. Life safety, incident stabilization, property conservation. Uh, you can monitor your routes that are in, in route. Uh, this is what you're going to use for a lot of your day-to-day -day typical operations. Now as an incident expands, this is where we're going to be going to the command board. Uh, notice that the command board has the uh, command chart that we reviewed earlier. Um, these green items here, these little green spaces, uh, squares, indicate where hook and loop is located uh, to fill out command and general staff positions with accountability tags. Um, there's a block up here in the title block. Uh, you can record your alarm data. Uh, and then down the left side, we have a system of strategy and tactic prompts uh, to assist you with your incident. Um, there's space up here in the top to draw your incident scene with the building side prompts of Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. Uh, and then there are holes that are drilled into the board in the upper corners so that you can hang that on the side of a command vehicle or from some other location using wire or a similar method. So we get a little closer view at the board. You can see here where we have the incident commander here at the top, uh, the PIO, uh, liaison, staging, and safety, uh, accountability. We have our planning logs, operation, and finance. Uh, and then here underneath operations, what we have our spaces for you to fill in your group and division um, supervisors and what their uh, responsibilities are going to be. Uh, we have a space for your two out. Okay, When your writ arrives, you can record those units here. Put the supervisor in this location there with the, uh, the green for the hook and loop. Um, also, if you have someone supervising EMS uh, with triage treatment and transport, perhaps on a large uh, mass casualty type event, something of that nature. Um, again, your alarm data up here in the upper right. Your prompts are down the left-hand side. With your divisions and groups, you can simply draw down a line and fill in units as they arrive. Okay, engine one, engine two, engine three, and so forth. And you can simply fill that in for each division and group as needed. So here we have an example of a command board in action. We have an incident commander, a PIO, staging officer, safety officer, and an accountability officer. Um, at this point we have three groups that are assigned and working on the incident. Okay, We have an attack group, an event group, and an exposure group, each with units assigned. So we get a little bit of a closer look. You can see how the hook and loop actually allows you to demonstrate right here on the command board who the supervisor is for each group so we know that this is the supervisor for the attack group the supervisor for the vent group and for the exposure group and then we can add additional units as we go to demonstrate how the operation is proceeding now working in conjunction with the command board we're also going to be using accountability boards. Um, the accountability board holds the primary unit cards. It demonstrates the group or the division assignment. And it can be arranged horizontally or vertically at the staff's discretion. Um, so we can be shown horizontally here at the top or vertically. Now notice this uh, lower example here, lower right corner, reflects the incident we were just looking at on the command board. We have again attack vent and exposures. Now as the incident expands, multiple accountability boards can be utilized. Um, this is why the system is designed in such a way so that it's able to expand. You have uh, the initial accountability board here. Uh, as you establish additional groups or divisions, uh, if you're using this vertical setup as we are here, you simply add an additional board and then you have space for more uh, groups and divisions as needed. Now in addition to using multiple accountability boards at the command post, uh, typically you're also going to have at larger incidents you're definitely going to see an accountability board at rehab, an accountability board at staging. Um, if you have a fill site in a rural water supply situation, uh, you may also have an accountability board at a fill site because of its remote nature from the scene. 
Now, to assist with identifying general staff and command staff personnel on the fire ground, the system uses an ANSI orange uh, compliant vest. The vest has your company marking uh, on the rear so that you can easily identify it, as well as the unit marking on the tag. Uh, so this can be returned to your unit after a large-scale incident where a lot of these will be utilized at one time. Uh, on the rear, there's a pocket for a title card. Um, this is used, again, for personnel fulfilling command or general staff functions. So here we can see one of the vests in use, uh, in this case by the incident commander designated by command uh, in the title card slot here. Uh, it's very important that if you have personnel that are using this ANSI orange as opposed to the ANSI yellow with orange trim, uh, which is typical throughout the county, um, that you get uh, line personnel uh, turned over to the yellow and uh, reserve using these orange vests for staff positions uh, so that it's clear to everyone on the fire ground. Now once again with those vests we have title cards. Uh, each piece of apparatus and each of the uh, officer bags that you receive will have what we call a standard set of title cards. Um, they include all the title cards you see here. They range from command to safety, accountability, PIO, rescue, water supply, operations, um, a number of different title cards, all the, the ones that you'll basically be using on a regular basis. Now in addition, uh, there's an advanced set of title cards. Uh, you'll receive one set of these per department uh, and then one set per uh, each duty vehicle if you have a duty vehicle uh, with your company. Um, these are just these three, planning, liaison, and logistics. Um, these were separated out just basically because uh, they're not used on a very regular basis. Um, so we thought that these were things that we could just issue one set per company. Uh, that would be adequate, uh, yet they keep us within NIMS compliancy. And finally, of course, if we uh, don't have in the kit what you need, um, there are two blank title cards. Uh, there are also dry erase markers for use on these title cards. Um, these are write-on wipe-off material. Um, you can use these to identify locations or titles that just weren't included in the kit. So for example, if I was putting someone uh, in charge of Side Charlie at an incident, uh, I can write Side C on the title card, slip that into the vest, uh, and then they're prepared to take action. Now if you have personnel who are entering into the uh, IDLH atmosphere, uh, it's not going to be appropriate for them to use a vest. Uh, so in other situations, we have what are called cylinder bands. These will be used um, rather than a vest in those IDLH environments. Each kit contains four cylinder bands. Uh, it contains one for the supervisor, safety, operations, and writ. Okay. Supervisor can be the supervisor of any group or division. Um, so for example, if someone has a house fire and they have it broken down uh, into Division 1, Division 2, Division 3, if I'm assigned to go up to the second floor, I go up into Division 2, I'm looking around to see who's in charge. If I see the person with the cylinder band on their back, I'm going to know that that's a person uh, who's supervising Division 2. Likewise, safety as shown here, uh, if you see this, you know that that person serving as a safety officer. Um, if you're putting someone uh, in the operations role, uh, you're putting them in an IDLH, you have ops. Um, and RIT, the RIT cylinder band is for your RIT supervisor. That's the person who is in charge of your RIT operation. The cylinder bands go onto the strap that secures your SCB-8 cylinder to the back frame. Uh, all you need to do is to loosen that strap as shown. Uh, you go ahead and apply the cylinder band around that and then re-secure that cylinder strap. Uh, the cylinder band has a uh, Velcro material. It's made from a um, fire-resistant material, um, the cylinder band itself, so you can apply that around and wear that just like you do your turnout gear uh, into a fire uh, suppression environment. The next set of items contained within your, in your accountability kit are location flags. Uh, these are made out of a rigid material. They're used with an extendable pole that extends from 4 feet to 8 feet uh, and a standard traffic cone. Uh, these mark locations that are not always obvious on the incident scene. Um, they include command, rehab, staging, uh, and the location for the RIT team. So to set these up, basically you uh, just insert the pole up through the bottom of the traffic cone, 
um, you place the flag here on top, um, twist the pole, and it'll extend out up to the 8 feet. Uh, then this readily marks the area that you're trying to uh, show your personnel. Um, this is useful for things like rehab where perhaps you have three ambulances on scene, but you're using one in particular uh, to run your rehab operation. And you can see here uh, the accountability board in place with uh, units that are at rehab and personnel taking their notes um, as far as uh, the status of various individuals who are uh, getting ready to go from rehab uh, back to staging uh, to proceed on with the incident. Each accountability kit and officer bag also contains a clipboard with ICS forms. Specifically, each clipboard contains a copy of the National Incident Management System ICS forms booklet uh, from September 2010. Um, in each clipboard, we've included two copies of each of the forms. We do recommend that you make additional copies so that you have those available as needed. Now, before we conclude with this segment, just a few more considerations um, that you should think about, uh, things you should be aware of. First, constructing crews. Uh, if needed, a lot of times some will look into combining crews uh, in cases of insufficient staffing. Um, this is something you can easily accomplish with using your unit cards. Basically, you just remove the personnel uh, from the unit card you're not going to utilize and put them onto the other unit card. So if you had Engine 1 and Engine 2 both short-staffed, you can take the accountability tags off of Engine 2, place them on Engine 1, and that now is your complete crew that you can utilize. Additionally, you can also uh, use this for personnel that are arriving direct to the scene. You can add them to an existing unit by placing their tags on both the primary and the secondary unit cards for that unit. Additionally, considerations for our fire police operations. Um, standard operations for fire police with privately owned vehicles will be for them to tag in on the dash to the left of the steering wheel to have a piece of the loop of the uh, Velcro at that location where they can tag in on their own vehicle. Now, if they're using fire department apparatus, such as a traffic unit, a service, a special unit, something of that nature, uh, they can tag in on that unit car to the apparatus just as you would on any other uh, piece, any other engine, tanker, etc. Um, personnel accountability port reports for fire police are typically going to be conducted by radio on a fire police channel uh, as part of their traffic con control group operations. Uh, this would be pretty standard as to what they should be doing now. Um, for long-term incidents, you may have a situation where um, a tra traffic control group supervisor or fire police group supervisor or aide can go around to the various traffic control points, the various intersections and so forth that are being utilized uh, to collect those tags up, uh, assemble a board just as we would in any other uh, situation, uh, and at that point actually use the accountability board to track uh, the traffic control points that are in use. Now in rural water supply situations where we're using tanker shuttles, um, there are some special considerations as well. Uh, tankers can be tracked on an accountability board. In fact, uh, probably the best way to set this up is for the water supply officer to actually use a separate accountability board for tankers. Um, you can simply have all the tankers right in front of you there as the water supply officer if you want to. Uh, you can also use the horizontal or vertical uh, capabilities of that board to actually track the tankers as far as which tankers are full, which are headed to the fill site, um, which are returning. Uh, you can also use the um, Bravo card in this situation if you need to split crews from engine tankers. This is fairly common practice uh, where we take a few personnel off the engine tanker, utilize them for some other fire ground assignment, and in that situation you need to make sure you split that crew uh, and put those personnel on the Bravo unit card uh, and place them separately. Uh, with um, the accountability officer at command. Um, a separate accountability board can also be set up at the fill site for those units and personnel. Uh, often that's going to be a significant distance from the scene. Uh, so that um, unit that's first arriving would simply pull out their board, put their unit card on it, and if they had additional personnel assisting in that area, they would all um, just account for themselves at that accountability board and then report to command by radio. When conducting staging at an incident, 
Uh, you want to make sure that you establish staging in a distinct location away from the command post. Uh, that's what we use the um, location flags for to help uh, distinguish that location, get a little bit away from command so the incident commander and his staff can work. Uh, the supervisor should wear the staging title card in their vest. Um, it should utilize its own separate accountability boards to track units that are currently in staging. Uh, when a unit reports to staging, they turn in their unit card. It's placed on that accountability board at staging. And then when they are assigned um, to do, go to complete a task, their unit card is returned to them. They take it to the accountability officer at the command post and go complete their task. Uh, the unit OIC... Um, is responsible for this task and maintaining that uh, during a, throughout the operation. When operating rehab, it's important that this is established at a distinct location also, away from the command post, just like staging. Additionally, it should be away from staging as well, so these don't blend together. It should be marked with a location flag. The supervi supervisor of rehab should be wearing the vest with the rehab title card. And again, to utilize their own separate accountability board to track units that are currently in rehab. This can be used horizontally or vertically. The personnel operating rehab can use this accountability board to track units that just have arrived, at re arrived recently at rehab, units that need to be rechecked, um, units that are ready to be released back to staging, um, or if personnel had to be uh, separated from their units and perhaps they're held in rehab or even transported uh, that can be designated as well. The unit OIC turns in that primary unit card upon their arrival and then they receive it as they're uh, ready to go back to staging for a new assignment. And the last consideration I want to discuss here in the advanced uh, introduction is the notion of having multiple entry and exit locations. Um, this can occur uh, on wildland incidents or search incidents if you have distant locations from each other on a larger um, incident location area, um, but you can also see this at um, areas where you have perhaps building fires where it's a set of row houses and you cannot access uh, the front from the rear without actually walking around the entire block. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to have crews tagging in at the front of the building to walk around the back and so forth. Um, so in this situation you set up a second accountability board at that second entry location. So this could be at side C, uh, could be a second entry point on a larger geographic area such as a waddle incident or something like that. Um, the division or group supervisor in that situation at that location or their aide utilizes that separate accountability board to collect unit cards of those units that are entering at that location. This concludes the advanced introduction to the accountability program for Adams County, Pennsylvania.